Well, I have a l big day ahead of me, guys. I'm going to interview the man who was Mae West's last assistant. He's got some of her furniture. He's got some of her costumes. This is going to be a blast. So say goodbye to this guy. Because he has to stay here. Well, I didn't forget my glasses, and this isn't my road pair. This is the extra pair that showed up, because today's vlog 150. I thought it might be fun to give away these, this pair of sunglasses. And since it's going to be a, involved in a lot of historical things, you're going to see Mae West gowns and costumes and, uh, and various pieces of furniture, I thought this would be fun to give away. Now, the only, uh, the only caveat that we had was that I promised him I wouldn't let anybody know at all where he houses this stuff in his uh, kind of movie memorabilia kind of little warehouse space. So next time you see me, I'll be there. Well, as I promised you guys, one of the most unique opportunities of my, of my life, I'm here with this man. His name's Tim. And the woman sitting right next to him is probably the most elusive actress of, of all time. Miss Mae West. And this is Tim. Hello. And Tim has, gosh, costumes, personal belongings, furniture, and you're nice enough to show me around the place that you store all of her stuff. Yes. So where would you, what would you like to show us? What are your favorite things? Um, I'd love to see everything, honestly. Well, this piece right here was from her dining room. This is her dining room suite. Okay. From it, 1934. And you actually told me that you wrote a book and you have, have pictures of her with almost all of this stuff. Yes. It's a limited edition that came out in 1993. And this is a lot of the photos from my collection. With little stories that she told me over the years. And, and one of the first things you showed me is you pointed out to a picture and you pointed over to her table and you said, I have that perfume bottle right there. Yes. I, I'll take you in the back and show you. All. I actually have this, this whole piece here. The fur muff. The only thing is she took the fur off to use it for something else and it was a Travis Banton design. Oh, really? And she also used it in uh, her movie Going to Town. In 1935. That's the funny thing is that normally I would walk in and I would just start recording and I would want everything to be a surprise to me, but you kind of walked me through so I could get an idea of how to set up the lighting and everything you're showing me. You're going, this was in this movie, this she wore in this movie. I mean, I was, I was spellbound. I can't wait to show everybody what everything you have. This, this is the dining room table. That that is the table uh -huh. that you have your book on right now. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. It, Any... was, it was stored very badly and uh, got water damaged and I had to have it reupholstered. It looks amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful. And then right above it, you have one of my favorite pictures in the whole place, which is the drawing of May. Yes, I got that from another fan that uh, unfortunately passed away, but he wanted me to have that. And this, this one also. I love this. This one here. Such a beautiful picture of her. And here we go. Let's go into this bathroom. This was her uh, dresser from her bedroom, her vanity bench, the mirrored screen, the boudoir chair, and her um, bedside table. And this mirrored table over here came from her beach house. Those are Art Deco tables and the lamp. And I'll tell you a little story about this. This was actually um, a plaster make from her pose from her nude painting. And it was designed by the same woman that did the nude statue. Wow. And to my knowledge, there's only two of these in existence. This one was hers, and then her sister Beverly had one. Did she ever walk around nude? Was she, did you ever see her nude? No. No? No. Okay. She was too modest. 
Was she Believe really? Yes. That's the thing that I think people would be blown away by. Yeah, she was very modest. Um, she didn't like nudity in movies. She said that. She said I can do more with my clothes on than with them off. I would believe it. I mean, she's notoriously known for uh, them sewing her into the gowns that she wore. Yes. With the with the finger, the thumb right the on the hip. The glass figure. Yeah. 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 And this little piece here used to sit on her in her living room on her um, coffee table. This was her father's. Um, Who was a champion? Well, he was a yeah. heavyweight boxer. Yeah. And this was his. Don't look at the junk inside. But this is his cigar humidor. Oh! But she used to keep all kinds of trinkets in it, like jewelry and stuff like that. And I got this painting, um, a fan had that done. And uh, and you had some stuff in the closet in here um, that you were going to show. You want this closet? Yeah, okay. yeah. And Oh, and this is her doorbell. From yeah! The, from the Ravenswood. She oh. had two. I only have one, unfortunately. And you said you actually know the person who moved into the penthouse at the Ravenswood. Yes. And there's a possibility that we might be able to talk her into letting us do a little tour. Hopefully. I will ask her and see. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> now, was this anything that belonged to her? This uh, this cabinet this, over here. This actually came from the beach house, also. And where was her beach house? Was it on PCH or yes, was it? It was, it was? Right, right on Pacific Coast Highway. And it was 514 was the address. And I think it's been resold two or three times at Richard Neutra house. Oh, okay. Whoever bought the house now has made it all high tech looking. Oh, so you can't even tell it was hers? No. Ugh. I hate when they do that. I do too. I don't understand what the purpose of... Yeah. They did the same thing with Walt Disney's house. They tore down the Carrollwood place and then built something else. I mean, it's... Oh, that's terrible. You can buy anybody's house if you're going to do that. Oh, history. So these are all hat boxes with her various hats, um, her bedspread from the beach house in Santa Monica, um, boxes of extra feathers that she had, and one interesting piece that's intriguing, I'll show you. This was used from 1944. <gasps> Wow! This was from her stage production, Catherine Was Great. Wow! That's incredible! And it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, it is. It's sterling silver with uh, gold overlay. Wow! That is incredible! Yeah. And I also have the scepter that goes with it. Oh, wow! Yeah, it's unique. Were these, now was this something that you, you bought an auction or was this something that was in her house that she kept or? You know, she had these two pieces and I, got, I got, did get a gown from the show. I've never found photographs of any of these because that play was probably the least photographed. Okay. Um, but I acquired them from somebody that had given them to her. Okay. And also I acquired... This is the license plate from her 1935 Duesenberg Roadster. Oh, wow! <laughs> I am so glad that you exist. I am so glad that you have this this love for this stuff that you... I mean, I always wonder stuff like that. Like, whatever happened to this car? Whatever happened? Yeah. You actually... I mean, yeah, you thought of everything. And I also have the, um, the order form when she purchased it. From the Auburn Company. Incredible. So, um... My whole theory was to, to, when she passed away, I, I started seeing things go all over the place. Yeah. And my thing was she saved all these things for all these years. Yeah, for a reason. Why, you know, I need to get back as much as I can. Absolutely. And hoping someday that, you know, a museum possibility. Right. Um, I certainly have enough stuff. You cer Yeah, you absolutely do have enough stuff. I've given something, paper-wise, I've given duplicates and stuff to the Academy Library. But they don't seem to have an interest in costumes or anything. Really? Yeah, because I had talked to them and they never really gave me much response. Well, I mean, then it's good that they don't have it. If, they don't, if they're not going to do anything with it or appreciate it, I mean, that's, that's yeah. one of those things they'd probably put out for a... 
one or two or three month exhibit and then it would go back and what's the point you yeah. know I mean as far as rest um, restoration and um, oh, how should I say uh, keeping it climate controlled and everything mm -hmm. probably Fashion Institute yeah would, yeah you know care for it the best I yeah I agree but as far as whether they would exhibit it or not I, I don't know. yeah I'd rather see it actually like you said I'd re I mean I just I think there should be a May West exhibit or like a May West museum somewhere yeah not in New York though because it's out of our way but I think there it should be out yeah. here you know this is where she she really I know she made her name in New York too but oh yeah yeah but she's so no, more noted for Hollywood I just to me like I told you over the uh, over the phone I feel like the Ravenswood should do something in the lobby create something or create yeah. a room or something that's yeah unique only to that and that they have to do an appointment only kind of thing or yeah yeah that's what I thought you know I said well if I could ever get the money to live in the apartment I would have done that but you know just have like groups of five come through yeah exactly <laughs> exactly make them fill out a questionnaire and and have the yeah. right answers to be able to go in yeah how big a fan are you yeah <laughs> now you have her gowns can we see some of the gowns sure. and some of the I mean just some of the yeah look at these pictures that might be one I see Mae West is she's like my type I love blonde women and just her attitude and her personality is so much my type. Oh, this is the gown from Catherine was great. As you can see. Extremely long. The train is huge. And it's heavy. Wow! Look at that. Oh yeah, people don't think about how how strong the women had to be just to walk around in some of the costumes that they made back then. Yeah. And then with her platform shoes, and then she had a headdress that went on top of this. Yeah, I saw somebody mention that when when she would walk around, they saw her uh, like putting the shoes on, and they looked like she was walking on stilts. <laughs> That's because she was short. She was only five two. Wow, incredible. This is an interesting. Fro uh, frock afternoon tea gown from the 1930s. I'm sure it's a Travis Banton. And it has the fishtail train. Oh, wow. So this was personal that was designed for her. Almost all of her gowns were custom made. Did she ever have them put like her name or her initials or anything like that in anything? Sometimes no, people did. Only if it was like studio, it would have a label in okay. it or something. But personalized, she didn't. This is another 1930s piece. Is that silk? Yes. Silk satin. Yeah, that's what. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Kind of cream color. Mm hmm. And that's a custom piece. Her negligees, she had custom made from, um, oh, what was the name of it? Jewel Park in Beverly Hills. Okay. And they used to do um, lingerie and different things. Was she, was she a fan of lingerie? Like, did she wear that kind of stuff around the house? Or was that uh, too oh, risque for she her? Would, she would wear um, a really nice negligee. Okay. Now, um, how did you how did you come into like her life? How did you meet her? End up working for her? I wrote a fan letter. Really? Yeah. And uh, she responded. That's it. funny that you say that because one of the things I was going to ask you was I found online um, a letter that she had written back to a fan, and one of the things she said in there is she said, "I love getting fan letters. Please send me your picture. I love to see what my fans look like and." Yeah. Keep writing me, and we'll so I can keep in touch and see how you're how yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I was very fortunate, you know. And she invited invited me to her beach house. She wanted to meet me, and uh, it just went from there, you know. And then one day she called, and she said, um, "I need a personal assistant. Would you be interested?" And I said, "Well, let me think about it." Yes, absolutely. <laughs> she said, "Meet me at the beach house at four o'clock," and I did. And, I had like, she brought like four humongous boxes of fan mail for me to answer. Wow. And, and she said... Uh, Wait, like like handwritten or did you type it and then she signed it or how no, did that usually work? Usually I type 
them and signed them as her secretary. Okay. Or if it was something important, I would type it and then she would sign it. Okay, yeah, because you told me um, that yes. her, her signature was always hers. Yes. If um, She had a un very unique signature. Nobody could copy that. Even I couldn't copy it. And she was very into signing her own things. No. She thought the world of her fans. I love that. Well, she would, you know, she'd go out of her way to sign an autograph or or meet a fan to say hello, or you know, she was going out or something, and there was a fan from visiting from out of town or out of the country, and she would and make time say, for him. Yeah, she'd say, "Well, meet me. You know, we're going to be going here. Meet meet me there." And wow, and, you know, just a few few minutes, just say hello and. Were you, were you a gigantic fan of hers, or were you a fan of just a lot of people from that time, and you happened to write a lot of people? Or how, were... Well, I had written a little bit, but not much. But I had seen the Life magazine when she was on the cover, and I started reading that she was doing Myra Breckenridge, and yeah, that kind of intrigued me. And then I happened to see Bell of the Nineties was the first movie I saw, and I said, "Oh my gosh, this she's." very unique yeah she is and so i just did some research and i found her address for her santa monica beach house that's where i sent the letter oh not the ravenswood okay no. and i first met her in 1969 that's wow when i first met her. and then how long did you work for her till her death or yeah i was with her till she passed away okay i didn't start right away and was she a nice person to be around? Was she more like working for a friend? Or how did she treat yes. you as a... I mean, she treated me like I was part of her family. That's so cool. And I asked her, I said, well, you know, I, out of all the mail you get and phone calls you get, I never see, you know, why did you pick me? And she said, it's just a feeling I had. Yeah, that's the way a lot of... I think that's how my, my uh, friendship with Shelly developed. Yeah. We just... I actually met her while she was in the hospital, and uh, mm -hmm. she started complimenting my hair, and then she started telling me a story out of her life. Like, she said, you don't even know who I am. I said, no, I do. I used to watch you on Roseanne, and my mom's a big fan of you and everything, and and then uh, next thing I know, she was saying, I like you. Will you will you come back and, and come talk to me again sometime? I like your personality, and we just, yeah. every time we go and hang out together, it was like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I met, you know, over the years, I've met quite a few people. Some good, some not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It seemed like the, the people, the actors from the golden era yeah. were a lot nicer and more appreciative. For sure, than the new, absolutely. Than the new well, I think, you know, I think with the social media and everything, it's their lives are so scary. much more intrusive. Yeah, it's very scary. So you, you have a lot crazier fans and yeah. a lot more unpredictable fans. Mm-hmm. Did you happen to, um, did she date? Did you, did you, she have any boyfriends or anything? Or well, how? you know, she had, uh, Paul was there for 25 years. Oh, okay. So he pretty much was, uh, Because, I mean, she has this, she has this very, like, um, promiscuous personality yeah. on, on camera. And yeah. from everything I had understood, it, that wasn't the way she was in real in life. In real or, life, no. In fact, one time I asked her, I said, well, she said, um, "She said, well, I, I would never date a, a star, another star." She said, "If I dated anybody, it'd be behind the cameras." That's you know, a I, stage hand. Or yeah, something. I believe it. But she ha was fascinated with uh, wrestlers, boxers. Yeah, you told me because yeah, I asked you. I said, "Did she go out to plays and movies or anything like that?" Yeah. And you said no. Yeah, I mean, once in a blue moon, she would would go to a movie premiere. Yeah. And. But not that much. I mean, she wasn't a party circuit. Player. Yeah. You, you she said she like went that. to boxing matches and fights yeah, and stuff yeah. down at the Olympic Auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what she did. That was her outings. That's so interesting. Yeah. And I think that goes back to her father, you know, being mm -hmm. in that field. So, yeah. This is her, one of her telephones from the 1930s. It even has her picture on it. Wow. I also have her telephones from her beach house back in the... No photos on I, those? <laughs> no. Not yet, but I, I, yeah. I keep searching. All of this stuff is yeah. is hers. This is a, one of her fans from Diamond Rock. Oh, wow. And a couple of them. 
Let me see if I can find the other one. The other, this one's not in the best condition. And you probably know where everything is, don't you? Like in here, you know exactly sure. <laughs> what you have and where it's at. And Pretty much. I know I need to like really sit down and inventory everything, but that would take years. This is one of her fans. Oh, here. wow. Little faded, but still. No, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah. So if anybody out there that wants to back a museum, I'm for it. Asking you shall receive. You never know who will see these. Sometimes you just have to put that out in the in the atmosphere and yeah, hope for the best. Find yeah, things find a way of happening. Now, were those that pink satin uh, hanger? Was that her hanger as well? Yes. So you actually got the the original hangers for a lot of that stuff. I do. Yes. When they came up available, you know, it's like a lot of it came with the hangers, and I think. And the guy says, do you want these? And I said, yeah. And it's funny, I, the first thing I, I told you is I love My Little Chickadee, and you said she hated that movie. Yes. And that was the one she made with W.C. Fields, where they made an agreement that he was absolutely not allowed to drink on, uh, yes. during that or anything, and then he showed up on set one day drinking, with or drunk, extras, yes. and she sent him home. Yeah, she came in, and she said, he's been drinking, get him out of here. And she, they, they're both credited as writing that movie, but you said she actually wrote it all, and he wrote pretty much yes, one scene. because the original title that she wrote it under was The Masked Bandit. And um, she had written everything, the dialogue, the whole script, and then he came in and he wanted to add this one little scene where it really didn't involve her. Yeah. It was at the bar. Yeah, and, naturally. <laughs> and she said, okay, that's fine, as long as it doesn't interfere with any of her yeah um things so then he did it they filmed it and then he came and said he wanted credit for writing and she said you only wrote a few lines and so they kind of battled back and forth over it and finally she just gave in and said let him do it which was actually pretty nice of her because his career was on the decline yes and at that time wasn't she the highest paid or or yes. at one had been the highest paid person at paramount she mm -hmm. the story i understood was she said how much does the head of the studio make and then when she found out she wanted like a dollar more yeah that's true yeah. just so she'd be the highest her. yeah yeah and so she was the highest paid two hundred and fifty thousand and one dollar or something no, like that 350 oh 350 wow. and then she could get um plus writing the script yeah she always insisted on writing her own her, her own, own projects yeah. she wanted her control over the character that she'd created yeah so, Which no, yeah. and and she a lot of people. If you are not familiar with Mae West, one of the interesting things about her is she was really the first person to make sex kind of an open. Talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she would talk about it in the movies. Yeah. She would find, and I, I read she would write a ton of dialogue, knowing that the censors were going to get rid of a lot of it, and yes. they would have to push something through. They would have to let something through. So she, she said, would do double entendres. She and, said that she would make it so bad it would embarrass her. <laughs> just so they would approve what she originally wanted in there. Yeah. And then, but you know, toward the end, it was getting very difficult. That's when she decided to. Well, she went to jail. Yeah, she, and the, the 20s, a, yeah. Fu a funny kind of story is that she did a play called it was called Sex, Sex wasn't it? Yeah. And they put her in jail for it. And from everything I understood, she said she had the time of her life that the warden and his wife would take her out to plays and dinners and stuff every day. Yeah, or... and then she said, I got to wear my own underwear. Yeah, yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she said, I don't want to wear that burlap stuff. Now, I know this is a crazy question, but did you ever, did you happen to get any of her, like, bras or anything like that, any of her undergarments? I have um, a couple bras, a couple corsets. Really? The old cinch corsets. Would you let us see any of that? If I can figure out where they are i'm not sure what what trump wow in. well i know you had stuff um actually and that's a really great picture of her that right was there. done by a fan that sent that to her as a gift and then you also now was that one of her wigs or was that what was that no that actually was a wig that a may west impersonator used to wear okay and uh why do you she think was she was so heavily impersonated i've noticed 
there's a lot of drag queen kind of performers yeah. love to do Mae West because she's all her mannerisms are exaggerated and okay that persona the sauciness that makes sense because I say you always see Liza Minnelli and you always kind of see Joan Crawford and people like that but yeah and and Mae West yeah. and I never understood that because to me I wish she always came off extremely feminine but just kind of like mm -hmm. could give it back to you could just you know fire yeah. back with a uh, response oh yeah she come back like that i love um, that it's like sometimes we'd be driving in the limousine and it's like she'd come out with a one-liner like you wouldn't believe so you see a funny sign or something and it's like just, <laughs> it was funny now I, I told you the first thing i ever knew about may west was somebody told me that she used to have scratches in her tub at the ravenwood from her diamonds now is that true or is that i don't make believe so. i can't see her taking a bath with her diamonds on <laughs> but she was a fan of diamonds she oh, yeah 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 but she mainly kept them in a safe deposit box because the insurance was prohibitive oh okay she only take them out for special occasions makes sense yeah so most of it that you see is paste custom that's what I figured. That's the way Shelly's stuff was. She'd have an entire yeah. drawer full of it, and then she'd say, "All yeah. the good stuff's in a safe deposit box." Yeah. All the stuff, like her, all the stuff she would want somebody to keep eventually. That's she had put it all out of way so nobody would steal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. You know. It's... Now, can we go to the other room? You showed me some other stuff in there. Sure. Which room? Oh, what, what, actually, what was what were these gowns? These are all gowns that from I would say from. And they some of them still have the original costume tags. Yeah. This one is, is this the one I think it is? Let's see. Because I see some really ornate sequined. Uh... These are mostly personal. This is um, the coat that she wore uh, in Myra Breckenridge. Oh, wow. Which is a really interesting movie. If people out there haven't seen Myron Breckenridge, I definitely recommend it. It's one of a kind. It's bizarre. <laughs> Very bizarre. She's the only thing that saved that movie. Raquel Welsh and Rex Reed. Yeah, this is from, from Myra. Wow. Now, how old was she when that when that movie was made? Oh, 78. She aged really well. She sure did. She took care of herself. Did she have any kind of uh, interesting regiments or anything that she believed in as far as skin care or she the way she mainly, ate or anything? She, she ate healthy. Um, she didn't eat anything out of a can or frozen. Everything had to be fresh. Fresh, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. She did like steak, so if she had a steak, it'd be bought that day and cooked that day. Um, fish, she like, you know, we'd go to Santa Monica to the fish market. Mm hmm And then we, uh, Paul would drive us to the beach house and he would cook the dinner. Oh. He cooked, oh, he was a Friday cook. What happened to him? Where? He passed away. Did he? Yeah. Some years back. He was in, I believe, in his 70s. But he was kind of surprised because he was such a health nut. <laughs> yes, uh, sometimes it, it doesn't help. matter, yeah. Yeah, it didn't help. People, sure. people get lung cancer that never smoked, so you just never know. Yeah, that's for sure. And one of the things I love is that you're not just a Mae West collector. You have a lot of stuff, so it's a good possibility we'll be back here to see the rest of your stuff. <laughs>